right, good evening, everyone. I'd like to call this meeting to order. Excuse me. We're going to get started. Thank you. Um, so I'd like to call the June 26th meeting of the Town of Arlington Redevelopment Board to order. Gavel. Uh, <laughs> let's see. So uh, this evening, um, please let us know. I know that there is um, a lot of noise coming from the HVAC. If you can't hear us um, further back or if somebody else is speaking, um, you need us to speak louder, please let us know or feel free to move closer. These mics are just for ACMI. They're not going to project for us. Um, so uh, my name is Rachel Zenberry. I'm the chair of the board. I'd love if the other board members could please uh, introduce yourself, starting with Steve. Uh, Steve Harbalak, good evening. Eugene Benson. Ken Lau. And we also have Claire Ricker, the director of the Department of Planning and Community Development, joining us this evening. So thank you all for joining us. Um, so without further ado, I'd love to move to our first agenda item, which is the public hearing, uh, the open public hearing for docket number 3752 Calix Peak at 251 Summer Street. And Claire, I will turn it over to you for updates on this hearing. Thank you. So I received an email from the proponent um, for Calix Peak at 251 Summer Street requesting to postpone until August as the board is only meeting. They requested initially to meet on August 14th. The board is not meeting on that day. So uh, I uh, advise them to please uh, uh, be ready uh, to present on August 28th, which is the only meeting we are having in August of this board. Great, thank you, Claire. Um, are there any questions from the uh, board members or any discussion related to the request for extension, starting with Ken? No. Jean? No. Steve? No questions. So the only um, question I have is around timing. Um, do we know yet the timing working back from fall town meeting as to when our hearing schedule is going to be? It is likely that the hearings, the hearings for, um, fall town meeting zoning will start that same night. Okay. Uh, and they did not feel that they would be ready to come in by the last um, meeting in July? They did not. Okay. They, uh, are working on a few issues with the site and they uh, needed the extra time. Okay. Um, I'm a bit concerned with our agenda for the that evening, given that I have to a 6 a.m. flight the next morning. <laughs> it's going to be a long night. Understood. Um, so I think we're just going to need to really try and keep to an allotted amount of time um, for the hearing. We'll work that through that with them. Certainly. Okay. Uh, so is there a motion to, um, let me just make sure I get the date of that August meeting. Give me one second. Oh, thank you. Uh, is there a motion to uh, continue uh, the hearing for docket number 3752 to August 28th, 2023? So motion. Sure. Second. Great, we'll take a roll call vote, starting with Steve. Yes. Jean. Yes. Ken. Yes. And I'm a yes as well. That meeting, uh, this hearing rather, will be continued to August 28th. I don't know why it's not showing up correctly in mine. Uh, okay. Uh, so we will now move to agenda item number two, which is to review the draft meeting minutes. Uh, we have four sets of meeting minutes. And so um, let's just take them in order, starting with any additions or corrections to the meeting minutes from March 13th, 2023. And I'll start with Steve. Uh, nothing beyond what I've already submitted to staff. Okay, great. Thank you. Um, Jean. I haven't seen what Steve submitted to staff, so can we do that? Uh, I have also not seen what Jean has submitted to staff. Hold on. Steve, were your comment? Do you know where your comments incorporated into the latest draft? Uh, I did not check, um, but I do have a copy of the of them with me. Uh, it's uh, last week. Uh, nope, uh, down on uh, 624. There we go. Nope, that's the working group. <laughs> oh. <laughs> um, I believe that all edits and comments have been included 
in uh, the draft minutes that as they were put on the website. But Mr. Benson, if you would like for me to verify that, I can do that and we can vote on them at our next meeting. I think that would make sense. Okay. Uh, sure, absolutely. They're here in draft form, so uh, we could just move through the formalities next week. Um, but I'd like to make sure we capture any other edits uh, so that we can vote on them next week. I, I suggest a lot of edits, which I believe are incorporated okay. into this. Okay, great. Ken? I have none. So if you haven't seen this, but the previous one, you haven't seen my edits. So, do you, so they're not change tracked? Okay. No, they're not. Well, in that case. Why don't you spot check? And I'll just note that I had one um, edit here. Um, so on the last on the, the last sentence of the second page, um, there is a reference to in the alewife group. I just wanted to see, Jean, if we could specify what that is. That's the... Um, Save the Alewife Brook working group. So if we could just add save the Alewife Brook sure. to that, that would be great. Yeah. All right. Any other edits to the meeting minutes from March 13th? Great, and Steve, were you able to spot check? I think it's in here, but it was it was minor, so yes, it is here. It is here, okay. So the latest set includes Steve's. So Jean, do you feel comfortable voting on them then? Okay, great. So is there a motion to uh, approve the Monday, March 13th, 2023 meeting minutes as amended? So motion. Second. We'll take a vote starting with Steve. Yes. Jean. Yes. Ken. Yes. And I'm a yes as well. Those have been approved. Okay. okay. <laughs> the next uh, meeting minutes are from uh, March 27th, 2023. And I will start with Steve for any additional edits or corrections beyond what's already submitted. Uh, so I'm, I'm verifying. Okay. <laughs> Jean. I don't have anything else. Ken? No, I have nothing. And I do not have anything other than to ask Claire whether or not um, when we approved the submission for uh, the hearing at this meeting, they were supposed to bring to the department a uh, uh, sample of the metal panel profile for review and approval by the, the board. Yes, and I don't know if they have. Uh, they have not at this time. Okay. You're right. So if that's something we could just follow up on yes, and make sure can. that they know sure. that they need to do that, that would be great. Yes. Okay. okay. Uh, Steve, were you able to verify if you were? So I, I verified the my uh, suggestions were incorporated. Okay, great. Uh, is there a motion to uh, approve the meeting minutes as amended? So motion. Second. Uh, we'll take a vote starting with Steve. Yes. Kim. Yes. Jean. Yes. And I'm a yes as well. So the March 27th, 2023 meeting minutes have been approved. We'll now move to the April 24th, 2023 meeting minutes. Uh, Steve, I assume you are verifying any edits? Uh, I have verified them. Great. Uh, any additional? Nothing additional. Okay, Jean? Nothing additional. Ken? No. Nope. And I don't have anything either. Is there a motion to approve the Monday, April 24th meeting minutes as amended? So motion. Second. We'll take a vote starting with Steve. Yes. Jean? Yes. Ken? Yes. And I'm a yes as well. The April 24th meeting minutes have been approved. And finally, we have the meeting minutes for uh, May 1st, 2023. Steve? Uh, nothing beyond what I submitted. Great. Jean? It's fine. Ken? No, no I don't nothing. Have, 
Great, thanks. I don't have any edits either. Is there a motion to approve the May 1st, 2023 meeting minutes as amended? So motion. Second. Take a vote starting with Steve. Yes. Jean. Yes. Ken. Yes. And I'm the yes as well. Thank you all for reviewing the meeting minutes and thank you, Claire. I appreciate the staff members working through all of those. Okay, uh, so let's close agenda item number two and move to agenda item number three. This is the ARB meeting schedule for the remainder of the year from July through December. Um, this is the schedule that we had discussed at our last meeting. So we will look for any additional comments. Claire, did you have anything? Related to the schedule? I did not, other than to make sure that I captured all the um, schedule conflicts, et cetera, that the board had um, told me about. I had a long list, but I okay. wasn't sure I got everything. Great. Well, we'll run through and, and ensure that. And um, we'll just note, too, that the October meetings um, are subject to um, change or addition depending on the final date of uh, fall town meeting once that's established. So uh, Ken, any additions or corrections or comments on the proposed meeting schedule? Uh, yeah, what what dates were uh, we planning to use for the MBT communities uh, outreach uh, for the public? I think that was separate based on through the working group, correct? No, I believe the working group was gonna have their uh, there are numbers of uh, outreach, and then a plan was to, was to be presented to the ARB. Then the ARB would have uh, their um, their set of meetings uh, with the town, you know, the, with the public. Okay. Well, let's work through that at the working group uh, meeting or the the working session that we have a little bit later. So it's not so none of it's incorporated here then. We will have hearings on the MBTA communities. Um, but these are ARB hearings. These are not any separate specific uh, public meetings related to any one topic. Okay. We can certainly decide to add that to our schedule, but that will not be these meetings. Unless we advertise, again, a specific hearing for, for that topic. Okay. That was my understanding, but that's okay. Okay. Jean? I have nothing to add to this. Okay. Steve? Uh, the schedule seems fine to me, Madam Chair. Okay. Uh, is there a motion to approve the July 2023 to December 2023 meeting schedule as submitted? So motion. Second. We'll take a vote starting with Steve. Yes. Jean? Yes. Ken? Yes. And on the yes as well. All right. That closes agenda item number three. Let's move to agenda item number four, the MOU for former ARB properties. And I will turn it over to Claire. Sure. So um, I did receive back from the town manager and um, town council uh, draft MOU. I believe we were waiting on changes and comments from them um, and uh, distributed it to the board. Um, and I did get um, a, an updated version um, from Mr. Benson um, today. Uh, I do have copies of it, um, but I haven't had an, uh, the, the the I haven't had an opportunity to look through um, any additions that Mr. Benson has made. But um, we can certainly work through this draft now um, if the board uh, would like to. Great, thank you, Claire. I have not had a chance. I did not see that come through today either. So um, maybe Jean, if you wanted to start off, and you, if you could take us through the uh, edits that you have suggested, that would be great. Are there copies to hand out? Everybody can see them. Thank you. Right, that's fine. We could just run through them on the screen. Right here. Yeah. Let me get mine up on the screen on my screen. Thank you. 
Section one. Thank you. So that has uh, genes changes in it. Yes. Okay. I I didn't I didn't do a um, track changes because they were too extensive. Oh, so, so you just rewrote it. I I rewrote it in the same format, so I can walk people through it. It's about to appear on my screen. Um, so if you look at the first paragraph, I changed it somewhat. I took out the references to the civic block and put in the actual addresses of the three properties and indicated that is to maintain our role in development uses of the three properties while transitioning custody of the properties to the town manager. That The rest of that is the same wording. Uh, transfer of properties, I rewrote that significantly. Um, it now says, for many years, the ARB owned and managed the properties with maintenance of the properties provided by the town. For 2023 town meeting, the town manager filed warrant articles 21, 22, 23 to transfer ownership and management of the properties from the ARB to the town. The ARB, after discussion with town, man town council, voted three to one to support the warrant articles with the understanding the town manager and ARB would enter into an MOU that would allow the ARB to retain a role in development uses of the properties. Town meeting then voted favorably on the three warrant articles to transfer custody. Um, the town manager authority section is the same. I didn't do anything with that one. So Chief, can I just ask a question in second two, section two rather? Yep. Um, was that really just to provide the, the main difference between that and the original language? You said you significantly wrote that was that just to provide the history yes the better okay. history i didn't Got really it. have the history that i thought would help inform what this is about okay thank you um didn't change town manager authority um just minor wording changes in section four and then the three a b and a, B, and C. A is pretty much the same. Um, B is pretty much the same with some wording changes that I think gets closer to what we were talking about. Um, and C, which is about 23 Maple, I moved the parking piece from B to C because it was about C. And what we don't have in is our ability to veto anything because we don't have ability to veto anything the town manager um, would do this just gives us advice and consultation. Yes. And um, I think this meets most of the town manager's comments as well as I think puts in more of what we had talked about. I'm sorry I couldn't get it to you soon. I had a busy weekend. No problem. I'm sorry I forgot the uh, Any questions or comments um, either relative to Jean's proposed revisions or to the original memo as submitted, starting with Kim. No. Uh, are we going to uh, motion to have you sign it uh, for us? Yes, that would be the motion to authorize um, me to execute this on behalf of the Redevelopment Board. Okay. I have a motion. Okay. Steve? Um, what's good to me? Uh, I did not have any issues either. I think that we landed on the phrase um, intensification of use of the properties rather than a specific percentage threshold, uh, which I'm I'm fine with. And, and I carried that over from... Uh, right, I saw that, yes. Yeah. Yep, I did notice that carryover. Okay. Uh, is there a motion uh, from the board to authorize... Um, me in acting as chair on behalf of the redevelopment board to execute this MOU uh, on behalf of the board. So motion. I'll second. Great. We'll take a vote starting with Steve. Yes. Jean. Yes. Ken. Yes. And I'm a yes as well. Thanks you all. Thanks. We'll see if uh, Claire can convince the town manager to sign it. Okay, great. Thank you very much.
Thank you. And I will work with Claire to, um, after the final review by the town manager and Doug Heim, um, we'll wait to execute until after they've had a final review of the edits that were proposed. And if we, if there are additional proposed changes, we will bring it back and go through the process again. Okay, uh, so that closes agenda item number four. And we will now move to agenda item number five, which is the MBTA communities discussion. Uh, so that will be a working session with the MBTA communities working group. Um, we are going to set aside um, see, probably between 45 minutes and an hour for any um, anything that we uh, would like to do. Uh, in terms of hearing where the working group is and then um, any any workshopping that we'd like to do of uh, whether it's the map, the proposals, et cetera. Um, I will note that uh, open forum will occur directly following um, the, uh, the working session. So we will invite anyone who is not either on the working group or the board who has joined us this evening to provide any feedback you might have. Um, during the uh, open forum section of our hearing this evening. So with that, I will hand it over to Claire. Great, thank you. And I want to welcome everyone from the working group. Thank you so much for all of the wonderful work you've been doing on behalf of the town. Um, I think we mentioned at our um, last meeting that we all thought it was an excellent um, uh, public forum on the 8th. So thank you again for all of your work. Thank you for having Yes. Excellent. No. And Take the work away. and the work continues. The work so continues. Uh, at our at last week's working group meeting on Tuesday, um, the working group asked if they could have uh, a, a meeting with the board um, as soon as possible. And we were able to accommodate them as, as quickly as this evening. So thank you to the board and thank you to the working group members of the working group for reacting so quickly um, and uh, able to be here this evening. Um, this is uh, the latest version. Um, of the map that we have been working on. This is uh, with the changes that were discussed at the working group on Tuesday night. I have brought quite a few copies. Um, if you'd like to take a look, because in addition to just this overall map, we have um, kind of the methodology for what happened here and why, why these districts were draw, uh, drawn the way they were at least the second time. So one of the things that came up in the meeting and in, in our public meeting. Um, Do that, you mind if I just distribute these while you're. No, please go ahead. One of the things that came up Thank in you. our public meeting um, when we sort of showed uh, this map and saw comment, you know, in our June, uh, June 8th meeting was a lot of people. There was a lot of comments about why not Broadway? Why wouldn't you include Broadway along with these three other you know, areas? Um, which I thought was a, a, a really interesting and uh, good comment. We had included uh, Broadway on previous iterations of the map, took them out, um, you know, uh, for our for the public meeting. Um, the map worked a little bit better to remove Broadway. We were able to get get the uh, fifty percent contiguous requirement moving through Arlington Heights and then down Mass Ave here. Um, one of the concerns that our designer had was. If we bring back, you know, sections of Broadway, or if we were to include this, would it then um, make the contiguous district that we had set up um, non-conforming and non-compliant? And so they did go back and take a look at what could go in on Broadway and not, you know, alter the equation um, such that this area would no longer be contiguous and compliant. So um, this was their... Um, uh, the designer, and by there, I keep saying there, the, our consultant, Util, um, who added uh, this little green section here, um, which would be which would represent MBTA community zoning along Broadway, um, and also um, on this iteration, I asked for at least some quantification of the density uh, proposed. Uh, now that we're sort of looking a little uh, a little closer, a little more closely at these concepts, what we are looking at now. Um, in, in, in a scenario with a 30 unit maximum, 30, 30 dwelling units per acre. Um, and you can see the calculations here that UTL did uh, to determine number of units uh, that would go in each, um, each one of these districts um, with a maximum four story development, zero setback in the front, 10 on the sides, 20 in the rear, 
on one parking space per unit. So using um, you know, this as sort of our standard, um, if we were going to contemplate a four-story uh, building with these setbacks, one space per unit minimum parking, these are the development numbers that we would be looking at um, if we were to limit the unit per acre maximum to 30. Um, and then you can see in these districts what we are looking at that get us to um, the uh, 15 million per acre minimum required by MBTA communities. Now, when we did this and we were sort of mapping three families, obviously our density was lower. However, we have a lot of concern that if we do uh, zone for three families that we may not get any meaningful housing production. And so asked UTIL to model uh, a four-story building, which could be four family, an eight family, potentially even a 12 family, depending on the size of the lot. Um, and you know, with this four stories, four unit, um, you know, sort of uh, example, this is what we end up with. Now, if we do this, and we say there's no unit per acre maximum, obviously we end up with far more units um, per district. Um, and then this is the final, this is the capacity using these dimensions. So what UTIL did is they've been doing the entire time is to scrape the map of everything that's on it and then try to fit these dimensions in to what we have already in terms of our, you know, our, our spatial parcel size, things like that. No buildings, just parcels. And so these are the calculations um, that UTIL put together uh, should we do that. Now, if we take away any unit per um, acre maximum, obviously we end up with the potential, the capacity for uh, this much housing, uh, almost 8,000 units. If we were to keep it under this 30, uh, you know, 30 unit per acre maximum while still keeping that four story development, this is what we end up with. So essentially what we're doing is we're saying height and density across these zones um, is going to look like this number of units. If we agree as a group, as a working group, that four stories is what we're looking for um, and that this is the level of density we think these areas can accommodate. So here's basically what that means in real English. Right now, that East Arlington district, were we to uh, set these dimensional standards as you see um, and cap it at the 30 unit um, per acre maximum, we would be looking about adding about 900 units here. The capacity, the capacity for 900 units. Um, and this is, uh, you know, this would be built over time. Um, and this again is only if we build it four stories, you know, we could do different things here that would yield different, you know, results. But if we were build standard four stories all the way through here, we'd be looking at about 900 units. So one thing that I think would be helpful for future with you too, is if we're going to give, um, right, if they're going to calculate unit capacity for us, it might also be helpful for them to give us the context of what the current Oh, that's interesting. In a particular area is. Because um, I think some people would look at that 3,000 number and be shocked, and I wouldn't, you know, but I also wouldn't be shocked if you went and counted how many are there and that number was, I, I'm just guessing off the top of my head, but like yeah. 2,000 or 1,500 or. Yeah. There know. are 20,000 dwelling units in Arlington, yep. and that's a fact. Can I ask just a, a quick question? What is our target number? Our target number is 2,600. By target number, you mean our absolute Our bare minimum, minimum number? Our minimum. <laughs> not, that we're, our, not that we're aiming for, our target. not that our target is the minimum. I just think it's helpful context. Right. So yeah. our target number is, I believe, our, our 20, minimum, minimum target. Yes. Minimum. Minimum, 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 minimum requirement. What do you have? 2246? 2046, excuse me. 2046 is bare minimum compliance. Thank you. Yeah. Now, oh, please. 
Could, can I just, um, before we There's do no that, could I ask that you all just introduce yourselves for the record um, yeah. for those who are joining us remotely? Um, we'll start with Sanjay Artero. Sure. I'm Sanjay Newton. Uh, I'm the chair of the MBT News Working Group. Thank you. I'm Meta Almat. I'm part of the Working Group. Rebecca Gruber is part of the Working Group. I'm Vincent Bodwan. I live in East Arlington. I'm an architect and part of the Working Group. Great. Thank you. And can I ask one more favor? If you wouldn't mind moving the uh, microphone closer to just where all of you are sitting so that um, we can make sure that the, the mic picks you up. Uh, I want to make sure that everybody's comments are, are heard. Thank you so much. That's perfect. Thank you. Okay, great. Thank you so much. Okay, sorry. Go ahead. I don't want to interrupt the order of things, but in our last working group meeting, we went around our table and just did some uh, takeaways from the public meeting. And so we heard from Mr. Lau, Mr. Revelak. I was wondering if we could just hear, I think uh, Mr. Benson and, and Ms. Zimbra, you were both there. I was wondering yes. if we could just hear if you heard, take away anything from your tables, uh, anything you heard, any thoughts that you had. Gene, why don't you start? I thought it was a very well structured meeting. I didn't sit at a table. I basically went around and sort of listened in, had a lot of tables for a few minutes to hear what people had to say. I was impressed with the number of people who were there. I have some concerns about what was written in here, which I can discuss mm -hmm. now. Mm -hmm. why, don't, why don't you go ahead and top line um, the concerns that you had? Okay. Um, I'm sorry, the mic is not going to project, so I'm going to ask Jean I to will have project. To project. Thank you. Thank you um, for letting us know you couldn't hear. I appreciate that. One, one is the bullet that says, while the legislation allows us to zone for three-family home, our consultant utils advice is that developments of that size will not be cost-effective given the cost of land in Arlington and the stringent building code requirements for multifamily buildings, 248 Mass Ave which was built just a few years ago, mm -hmm. is a three-unit building. It's expensive. Each unit is assessed for about a million dollars each. And it was a teardown of a complete teardown of a different building and built of that. And I know some people in this room have just worked on a three-unit building in Cambridge. Again, they're fairly expensive to sell, but they're doable. So I'm a little bit concerned in that. I don't think we should zone only for three family, but I think this isn't precisely correct. Maybe UTL said that, but I think facts on the ground are otherwise, and I'm concerned about that. Um, and it relates to the map, but I'll get to the map later. Sure. And the other one was the last bullet on the second floor that says it's possible to incentivize development that has commercial on the first floor ground floor and residential usage on the floor above, height bonuses, et cetera. That's true, but it doesn't talk about how difficult or impossible it is to really come up with an incentive that will economically work. So I'm concerned that that bullet was also a little bit misleading. But other than those two things, I, I was very pleased with the meeting. Great. Thank you, Jean. Um, I also was really pleased with the meeting. I thought that there was some great engagement. There were some, I did sit at a table for a portion of the evening and there were some really um, interesting and I think very creative ideas that were put forth specifically around how to distribute um, some of the uh, MBTA communities district lot, uh, parcels throughout some of the secondary corridors in town as well. That was something that... Um, we were really excited about, which um, I was I was surprised to hear come up, um, but there was a lot of excitement there. And I think uh, my big takeaway at the end of the evening when everybody shared out um, what they had learned was how much people were, number one, in favor of, of this in general about not, you know, there wasn't a question of why or if, but it was how, which to me was really exciting. Um, and how much people also wanted to prioritize uh, the commercial uh, development that we have and uh, have the opportunity to continue to grow. So that was something that I think came across loud and clear as well. Yeah. Great. Thank you. It's, it's 
great to hear those um, impressions. Um, do we, do we want to share a little bit of some of what we talked about at our meeting too? I think sort of one of the big takeaways we took, we got was like, you know, we're in the right direction. Like we didn't come away from that meeting feeling like, oh, throw the map away, right? Where we've got the totally wrong idea, right? I think we came away with that we're on the right idea and, and let's keep iterating this and we're gonna, this is not the final map, um, but, but we're in the right ballpark and now we gotta start figuring out and refining and finding more details. I think was one of the sort of takeaways that came away from that meeting, right? Um, I, I mean, as you can see here, one of the takeaways, right, we heard from a lot of people, why not Broadway? <laughs> uh, and so, you know, the, this that you see here is, is definitely a response to something that we heard um, at that meeting from a number of people. Um, and that we had considered, and you know, yeah, um, that's why we're going to iterate. Because um, we're going to hear lots of different things from people. I don't know if anybody else from the working group wanted to share. Well, I, I kind of have my, my, own, my own statement that sure. I want to make. Um, <laughs> we, Try, just try to stop me. Um, um, if anyone does that, it'll be me. <laughs> yeah. Fine. Um, so I, I have my notes. Yeah. Um, okay. So, I mean, uh, you all don't know anything about me. A couple of you do because I've shared, but I have been studying towns and cities and urban growth and form since I arrived in Manhattan uh, for college in 1997. So I have a degree in uh, urban studies and planning, I have a fellowship in urban design, and I have a master's in architecture. So I have been thinking about these things for a very long time. Now I have never volunteered for the town because I don't have a lot of time. I don't know if I ever will again, and I have because uh, I'm, you know, I'm very passionate about this issue. So um, my goal for tonight is to articulate the huge opportunity that this uh, MBTA Communities 3A legislation is, um, and that this could be the biggest zoning change in Arlington in 50 years, since the down zoning in the 70s. And in my opinion, that is unequivocally a good thing, um, and, and that we need that. Now, you know how hard it is to pass any zoning legislation in this town. Um, the incremental changes, they get, um, you know, hacked apart, beaten down, talked to death. Um, you know, I've heard the stories and, um, you know, and I've experienced some of it myself. Um, there are dozens of initiatives happening in town, no less than 10 plans, as far as I know, uh, many of them residing um, with the ARB, um, and you know that you guys are taking up in the in the um, in the course of your regular business. But the 3A legislation is not business as usual. Um, it is remarkable for several reasons. Number one, the state has given us a mandate that we have to do this, and there are um, you know we risk losing very important funding and we risk being sued um, and uh, you know, other things like that. And they've also given us a very good tool, which is a simple majority in town meeting, which you guys don't get the benefit of for all your regular work. We, just uh, to clarify, we, we do for, for, any, for some of it. So for some there, of it. Yes, okay. absolutely. There I are thought four some different criteria which allow us to uh, okay. take a Okay, majority. thank you for the clarification. Yep. Okay, um, so Lexington has passed, passed a very ambitious plan, um, and they have included numerous changes to their zoning that go beyond the scope of the 3A legislation. And I think we can do that too. Um, I, but I think that we all need to work together. So that, you know, that we're just meeting for the first time, you know, we, we've been working for months, but we need to work together on this and come together as a, uh, as a group. We've had a good process so far, um, but the working group has been uh, dancing around a few issues that we keep kind of getting stuck on. And one is the redevelopment of Mass Ave. And uh, what I have heard from almost everyone I've talked to is that they agree there should be more density on Mass Ave. And, and this, the survey bears this out, and that we should also protect the commercial and industrial zoning. Um, 
And I think we can do both. And I think a little bit of creative thinking can allow us to do both of those things at the same time. Um, so I propose that we roll some of the ARB's current initiatives into the 3A proposal. For example, the Arlington Heights Business District, uh, as well as an outline uh, of, a, um, of a, center a center business district, as well as a Capitol Square business district. Roll that into the proposal. Um, and that way we'll know which areas of Mass Ave are going to be um, set aside for mixed use um, commercial, you know, uh, development and which areas might be available for 3A uh, multifamily housing. Um, I also propose that we allow neighborhood office uses in R1 and R2 districts. Now that's the paper, uh, that's the proposal that I sent to you, Jean um, and Rachel, uh, and I have shared already with the working group. So. That is neighborhood office uses that could go on secondary corridors rather than on our primary commercial corridor. And, that, and, and that's a two-part proposal. One is um, allowing those uses only for streets that, uh, only for parcels that face um, certain key streets, so, which you, know, you can decide, Park Ave, Mystic, um, Lake Street, etc. cetera. Um, the second part is, what then to do with the B1 parcels. There are 83 B1 parcels on Mass Ave um, that I've counted, 48 of which are in East Arlington, by the way. Um, now those, those, could be, uh, those could be rezoned in either a sort of central business district um, high density uh, or mixed use uh, high density way or for potential for the multifamily housing. But I think those are an example of a low density use along Mass Ave that just no longer fits with the, with the vision and the goals of the town. Um, so, I, you know, this is the first time we're seeing this new iteration. I think what we've got is a very lukewarm compliance plan here with, uh, we're starting to get uh, there's starting to be some kind of a concept about corridor and whatever, but it's still, you know, it is very much undercooked. I think that we can do a whole lot more with this legislation um, if we kind of, if we coordinate and we organize our efforts together and try to uh, put forth something that is a bit more comprehensive than the direction uh, the, the, the role we've sort of been uh, given to date. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, any other comments from the working group? Okay. Um, I'd love to hear from Steve and, and Ken, your thoughts um, from you know, knowing where our discussions have been before at the Redevelopment Board mm -hmm. and your role in the working group. Maybe we can start with you, Steve. So there is... I mean, one of the one of the things that strikes me about this is the way it resembles the the, the map before it was rewritten in 1975. Mm -hmm. It's you know there's very much a corridor feel to it. Um, you know, part of it you know, it took us it took us a little while to get to the first iteration. You know, having um, no constraints around where the district can be located. Um, so we're, you know, the zero percent needs to be within half a mile of transit. Just, um, you know, that's, that's the guidance that we have. Um, so, I mean, it was nice to get a first iteration. I kind of, there, I have, I'm sort of torn about the parcels right on Mass Ave. And in one sense, I think this makes, makes it a lot, you know, make, makes a lot of sense to include. On the other hand, I know we've talked about you know wanting to do something more, but for better or worse, and I don't mean this as a as a criticism, the rezoning the business districts has been on the to do list since at least 2015. <laughs> um, it's it is the first recommendation in the economic development section of our, our master plan. So I um, 
you know, I had not heard Meta's idea for like combining Arlington Heights business districts, but I, I, I think I, I, I like the idea of, at least now, at the moment, I'm liking the idea of, you know, trying to think a little more holistically about what we're doing here and what we kind of want for the future of Mass Ave. Thank you. Ken? Um, <clears throat> I like the way this has been progressing. Um, as not everybody here may know, but this is probably like this sixth or seventh version of a plan or a direction that uh, we're looking at. And it's been following some comments from uh, from the public, some comments from us, uh, where we said, you know, we want to maintain uh, the viability, liability of the commercial spaces and retail spaces, and that's and uh, we've been trying to attract all, coordinate it all in, and I think it's coming to where you know we have a, a sort of a quarter approach, what Steve said, and I think this works well. I think our next steps are that. Along this corridor, it's going to be different. Uh, I think we're going to do different densities. So, like in uh, East Arlington, the density may not be as high. It may not be five stories. It may only be four stories or three stories. But the density has increased there. Or we haven't got there yet. So I'm not. Don't take that for granted. Okay, please. We're just talking about that. And then uh, in some areas, the central, the heights, it may go up to four or five or six because the, the ability of the, the topographics may work that out. So it's a process that uh, I think uh, I'm encouraged that we're doing right now, and it's going the right way. I'm not saying anything that's going to say this is it. Nothing's etched in stone, but this, the process is there right now. Um, I think another thing I, I would like to push on a little bit more, as far as I'm personally uh, saying is, yes, we have, de we have de designated zones for commercial, but also I want to maybe designate somewhere where there's um, zones where there could be some growth, future growth in, in the commercial. Um, just like I had uh, met and said earlier, you know, we can take some of those uh, lower B1 ones and move it out uh, to the side streets, which allow more growth along the, on the major streets, uh, you know, meaning Mass Ave and Broadway, but I'm not, I'm not saying let's all replace that all with just pure housing. Maybe we have a, a growth area that if it's adjacent to a existing commercial, there is potential for that to grow a little bit more. So it's just, it's just we're working to the next steps. And then we're just doing zones or how things reach out. And I think we're, we're getting there. And I think if we keep the meetings up, we'll, we'll we're going to get to a compromise that works for everybody. And that, uh, I just want to keep on encouraging not to hem things in. Because this thing we're looking at, it's going to be 30, 50 years before it becomes anything. Um, you know, five years from now, it's, it, may, it just may be one or two pieces. But it's going, to, it's going to take time to develop. And I just want to make sure we have enough forethought to think that way. Thank you, Ken. Yep. Gene, your thoughts? Thanks. Yeah. Um, I think that was right to add Broadway. I heard that, and I think we actually had said that earlier mm -hmm. at some redevelopment board meetings. Okay, Robert, I, and we had said that earlier at some redevelopment board meetings also. Um, I'd like you to think a little bit about thinking about sort of a concept in form-based codes with transects, because it looks to me like you're allowing um, MBJ communities not simply on Mass Ave, but also on the side streets and maybe the next street down in some places. So if we have four or five story on Mass Ave, I'm thinking of lower buildings as you move away from Mass Ave because that I think is more in character with what the town is like. Um, so I'm thinking about that. Um, I took a walk 
on Mass Ave the other day looking at a lot of the residential um, lots. I didn't get all of Mass Ave done because I was walking and thinking and it's hard enough to do both of those things, let alone, you know, traverse all of Mass Ave. And, you know, there are seven story apartment buildings on Mass Ave. So, you know, four stories is maybe too small in some places too. And I don't know how, it, it's almost seems to me that before we're done, I have to go out and look at each one of these parcels and put them in some sort of context to what we're thinking about. Um, the, the other thing, and I've mentioned this before, I think it would be interesting to um, allow mixed use in all the R zones on Mass Ave and Broadway also, so that there'd be, um, let's say you're gonna say four story max residential, but I'm making up the numbers obviously. Yes. Six stories residential. So if those actually incentives work, we may get some more commercial retail space. And if we don't, we're not losing anything by trying it. But if we flip it the other way and try to do the mixed use on the business and it doesn't work, we're losing the business. So I would like to try thinking about on the R's on Mass Ave and Broadway, doing something like that. And therefore, you know, if we have seven story buildings and we do four stories of residential, but six stories, if you do mixed use, we may be better off. I, I ended up reading Meta's um, proposal late this afternoon. Thank you, Meta. I, I think one thing that's interesting to think about, which Meta points out, is all of the B1 zones um, on Mass Ave. And it reminded me of something when I first moved to Arlington over 33 years ago, and somebody said to me, isn't Arlington so much better than Cambridge on Mass Ave? Because once you get into Arlington, you have all the small buildings on Mass Ave. And I think that was the thinking from back in the 1970s, but I'm not sure it's consistent with 21st century thinking and what the town needs. So I, I think there can be some discussion about whether the B1s should be flipped to B2 or something else. I'm not sure that allowing doctor's offices, you know, in the R1s and 2s on Park Ave and Pleasant Street is the right trade-off for allowing residential in the B1s. I'd be more interested in um, thinking whether we should do something different with the B1s as part of this. But I do like the idea about allowing professional offices um, on some of the streets. But I think that's going to have to be separate from MBTA communities, and that's going to require a two-thirds vote um, of town meeting. But I think it's worth thinking about that as a potential package. One just last thing before I'm done. You know, for a lot of years, I taught planning and land use law, and I often use Arlington as an example, right? So what could I know? better. So I had an example of a dentist office that currently exists in a house. And I said, and, you know, I showed them what the accessory uses were. And I said, how could this dentist office possibly be in this house? It violates all the rules for professional businesses <laughs> in houses. And finally, about the fourth or fifth year, when I taught the course, one of the students came up with the right answer. I guess the house must be in the business zone, right? <laughs> Which is the right answer. So I think we should think about some of what Med is talking about for some of the side streets to let in, you know, doctor's offices and maybe some professional offices there. But I don't know if it has to be done at the same time. This is done now. We at the board had talked about holding off on the Arlington Heights Business District until the spring so that we could get this into town meeting with a few other things we wanted to do without 
sort of having too much going to town meeting at once. I still think that's a better way to think about doing it, but, but you raise an important issue and maybe other people will think the other way. Thanks, Jean. Um, I think I agree with you. I think in an ideal situation, I would love to do the Arlington Heights business districting at the same time. I just want to be completely um, realistic in that it's a capacity issue. And Claire, I don't want to put words in your mouth, but you know, our Department of Planning and Community Development is running at far less than a full capacity staff. And I want to make sure that we have the capacity to appropriately um, depict the impact, the potential impacts, the capacity building that we have within MBTA communities and the other very um, important dimensional modifications that we have to the zoning plan. And I would, I would hate to shortchange any of them because we tried to take on too much. We have been wanting to tackle this Arlington Heights business district for some time we put, we wanted to do it this spring and we're asked by the town manager not to. So it was already on the agenda. It is certainly not a lack of willingness by this board to take on those pieces. Um, this is a, a board that um, has a lot of new members with a lot of new energy. We have a planning director who is ready and willing to take on these, these challenging discussions. Um, we just have a capacity issue right now to take on these items. So. Um, I think that the other thing that I will mention as well is that you, know, you brought up the B1 districts, which I know Meta was in your, your memo. Um, I, I would much rather see those redistricted as other B districts than into housing because many of them are just, they are hemmed in between B4 and industrial zones. And I don't believe that redistricting those small parcels as residential is the appropriate way to um, move forward. It's, it's not product productive in that it keeps some of these small parcels from being combined with their adjacent parcels, which is ultimately what our board has, has really talked about doing along Mass Ave, is to take some of this Swiss cheese that we see all along Mass Ave and to really think about the way that we can create corridors of similar districting um, rather than what we have now, which is down zoning. And I apologize I, just at the scale that this is, I, I can't really, Sorry. no, it's fine. I mean, it's, um, I think that when we see the map in the future, it might be helpful to see it blown up and maybe um, to, you know, see yes. some of these parcels together because it's hard to tell, for example, for, for me exactly which of these are fronting Mass Ave and which of these are the parcel back. And I'm still very much in favor of um, ensuring that we do not have any parcels that are part of the MBTA communities, residential only, fronting Mass Ave, especially where we have the potential to increase the, the, um, the business corridors. And I think that there are many places along um, where it appears to me that this is fronting Mass Ave, that we um, we have again these kind of uh, patchy patchy networks of, of businesses that I would I would again I think we have talked as a board are very much in favor of uniting by um, by whether it's overlay districts or rezoning those particular areas to really create a more vibrant business district around the the, the three major business districts we have in town. Sure, so just to clarify with this map, yes, um, these zones where there's no commercial do come all the way up to Mass Ave. There is a version of this map that shows the zone at least one parcel back and also not on any currently commercial zoned area. Great. So we so do have that. I would love to ask, right, another way to think about that right, is um, if you're thinking about the future and you want the, the flexibility to be able to do things, um, I would. The other way to think about these districts is that we're going to create some districts now. They don't have to stay the same, right? As long as we add some extra capacity, right? As long as we are not creating a bare minimum map here in six months, right? When you're ready to 
rezone uh, a section of Mass Ave, you can you can have at it, right? Let's like, just think about the impact, though, on the owners of those parcels to have to be redistricted multiple times in a row. I, I'm I'm sensitive to that. That's a that's a challenging. Um, position to put those those owners in. So I, I just want to bring that forward, that I, I think that making sure that we are not giving these folks whiplash either with, you know, this is this is the new district and the new potential for your property. And then, you know, we come as a board when we're able to do the work that we've committed to and already started as a board to then having to go back to them, that makes our job, quite frankly, as significantly harder um, when we have to go back to them and uh, present yet another modification. I think that that makes a lot of sense in certain areas if we're thinking about um, overlays and, and bonuses, again, beyond Mass Ave. Um, my concern is, is those folks along Mass Ave who would potentially be impacted multiple years in a row by by changing um, legislation in terms of what their what their parcel is classified as. Rachel, can, can I? I'm, I'm trying to understand what you're saying in some yes. way. Are, are you saying you don't think the overlay district should be parcel for parcels that are directly on Mass Ave at all? Or for just, MBTA community for yeah. the residential? Yes, I'm I'm concerned. Oh. For example, um, here in the Heights, where between the parcels we are trying to unite, for example, in the blue here, that's right along Mass Ave. That is exactly what we were talking about, changing into a business use. And so by eliminating the opportunity for mixed use or only offering it as a bonus, I think we take away some of the opportunity that we were trying to create. I think as well in East Arlington, again, you see the outline of the commercial, and it's it's spotty, right? So again, if we were to take the same um, the same theory that we were looking at um, imp that we were looking at implementing in the Heights, we would similarly be looking to unite some of these business districts, some of these pockets that we see on either side of Capitol Square, and by um, by including these parcels that are right along Mass Ave that are in, in the in-between spaces, I think we take away some of that potential. So I'm looking at this very slightly differently. Okay. I mean, I agree with you about the parcels in the heights that we all talked about rezoning um, to business when yes. we do the whole business rezone. But there are, I guess I sort of feel like Mass Ave can exist with both mid-size residential buildings and commercial buildings and mixed-use buildings. And I'm not in the don't do it on Mass Ave at all. I'm more in the let's walk up and down the street and see what makes sense. And if there are a couple parcels that look like they would be much better for commercial, then they don't go in the overlay district. But I think there are a lot of parcel there potentially that would work in the overlay district and we have a street that's activated by both business, commercial, and residential. So I'm in a slightly different place than you are. Kim, you have something to say? No, Vince has had his hand up oh, a while sorry. and I, I want to realize that you know he has his hand up and I want to <laughs> get his opinion. So to these points, um, and the working group hasn't made a decision, so I don't want to speak on behalf of the whole working group, but I think that we're not necessarily talking about zoning for only multifamily housing. I think that we are open to mixed use zoning along Mass Ave and Broadway, and that, in fact, we would love to see it. I've heard some cynicism about the viability of commercial that you might zone for mixed use but that it might not happen and i suppose i don't buy into the extreme cynicism but i do understand that the kind of market is is very different so i'm curious if we could get here a little bit more because i think we could look at 
a combination of approaches. One approach is that you reserve some space strategically where you say, this is an area where we expect to grow our business, business districts. And hopefully, we expect to do it not in the distant future, but in the, in the, in the, in the short term future. And then, on the other hand, incentives and carrots that we might uh, use to encourage the mixed use to happen. You know, I, but between those two, do, and in your experience uh, reviewing projects and improving projects, do you get a sense that some of those strategies might be more appropriate in certain areas, some in others? I'm just curious if you have some thoughts on that. Steve? One of the, like, one of, I remember reviewing Lexington's bylaw. And, you know, they have, a, they have a district where it's like three stories, but if you do ground floor commercial, you get an extra two. And I was a little puzzled at first, but why two? And it finally dawned on me. It's, you know, people have co or applicants who come before our board tell us that, well, the ground floor, the commercial doesn't really make a lot of money. It's kind of hard to finance. Residentials, you know, it makes more money. It's easier to finance. And, you know, we'd rather do that. So the two-story height bonuses for the ground floor commercial is, well, one of them is that, you know, commercial space that may be challenging for them to do. The other story is a 33% density bonus on residential, which at least to me seems kind of attractive. You know, we I did ask the head of the Lexington um, planning board if they did any studies for that. He said, no, we're taking our chances, and if it doesn't work, we'll amend it. I'm not sure that's what we want to do with those circumstances yeah. well, there. I like trying it on the residential, in the residential mm -hmm. zone. I don't like trying it in the already B zone. I think an interesting example, and this is from a couple of years ago in, at 1500 Mass Ave, which is in the B1 zone, almost at the Lexington line, there was an old, tired three unit residential building, and it's replaced by mixed use, um, office on the first floor and two levels of um, residential above two units in each level. So that can happen in B1. We may want to fix B1 because right now B1 does not allow, allow commercial on the ground floor. Business use, right. So it'll have office. It allows right. office, right. but not So we might want to, as part of this at least, if we're not getting rid of B1, and maybe we should, at least fix that part of B1, you know. I, I guess I should mention, this is a lot of stuff and a lot of decisions to be made. And my real hope is that we end up with a unanimous vote by the redevelopment board, because I think that will send a much stronger message to town meeting than a split vote on this. Well, yeah, I just wanted to push back a little bit and say that's exactly why I wanted to include the Arlington Heights um, business district in this because you're talking about wanting to take some of the residential because you already have a plan. So, and, and I personally don't think it would be that hard to draw an outline around the center or an outline around um, East Arlington. We all kind of already know what it is. Um, but if what you want uh, is continuous commercial all along Mass Ave, number one, I, I think that's never going to happen. Um, and, you know, it's just economically not viable. But what we're looking for as the sort of housing advocates is give us some of Mass Ave that where we can put some housing. Um, and so take all the commercial you want, but let's, let's concentrate it. And by the way, that makes for much more vibrant uh, and interesting commercial centers that will support them, as opposed to this like strung out Christmas lights thing, um, where it's like dotted all along. So, you know, but there are huge sections in between, for example, in between the center and Capitol Square, that is a lot of apartment buildings, uh, a lot of B1 that's just really two family homes with massage therapists in it um, and you know why can't we have higher density multifamily housing in those areas so you know I just think I think that you know we have we are forced on a much faster timeline than you are 
because um, and because the town town meeting members, the majority of whom, 95 percent, want us to participate in the fossil fuel pilot study. So we have to get this done by the end of this year. We could have taken a whole other year. So I'm just going to say something. There is no us and you. It's a we. Okay. <laughs> okay. So that's that's the first thing okay. I just want to say. That's that's fine. But okay. we need to get to a we because we're because Understood. we're not. Understood. And I need you to hear what we are. Okay. So part of um, part of this is listening, not to be reinforced, but to hear what ideas are coming from this group that's been working with the town for a very long time. Right. Okay, um, and I think that we certainly um, getting to the Arlington Heights Business District is more than just drawing a boundary. There is, um, again, we had really talked about, given our experience with presenting to town meeting, the, um, the types of visuals that are required for people to see the potential in many of these ideas, many of which we're going to need to show them for these MBTA communities pieces to work as well. It's people, most people in town meeting can't read plans. They're, they're not architects like you and like, like me. And so they need to be able to see things in three dimensions and that takes time and that takes, that takes resources. And we are 100% committed to doing that. Yep. So I want you to understand again, what, um, what resources are, are needed because of, of the types of uh, materials that we are going to need to, to um, show town meeting members so that they can really see the potential and understand the full breadth of what is, is, is coming in front of them. Sure, and um, I've been, uh, people have been telling me some version of that story since I joined the group. It is not a story, that is what we're going to be doing. I know, but okay. it's of no and I can't, and that's not how it's that done. That is not what was said here. It yeah. wasn't no and I can't. Um, it is to get to a yes, this is what we are going to need to do together. I'm, okay? I'm just pushing Thank, for I, a I, I've vision. heard you, okay? Thank you. Please. Um, I'm sort of with you on that. No, that's so unusual. I know. <laughs> <laughs> Having some areas where there's residential on mass out, I'm not as concerned. Mm -hmm. Okay, I, I'm, I'm not saying we have to reserve all of mass out for commercial, but also I, but I'm, 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 I agree with you a lot. Saying right now, what's wrong with our commercial is it's all these little piecemeal parts. So when we do uh, insert some housing there, we can't hem. Mm -hmm. the commercial in. So we, so that's why I, I talked earlier, we have to give the ability for the commercial to grow. Yes. And I don't mean like the size of what the square footage of the commercial is going to double the square footage. I'm not necessarily meaning that. That may happen, it may not happen. But I'm talking about each parcel has to grow. One of the biggest things we've heard from a lot of land, uh, landowners and people wanting renting space, is the parcel's too small. They can't do anything with it. Okay, that's what we have to uh, address. And and then you know that you know the building's too old. We need newer buildings, and then the foot traffic. So I think having a blend of some housing around there, either behind it, on the side of it, whatever, that increase the foot traffic is good. But we don't want to hem in. The commercial, and I think we're working on that. Uh, you I know, appreciate that. Yep. They're not a. We're working on it. Okay. Sanjay, sort of, please. One of the things I think that I'm really hearing is, don't fill in the Swiss cheese. Don't fill the holes in the Swiss cheese, so that the block of Swiss cheese can become something other than yeah. Swiss cheese. Cheddar. We can be. We can make it. We can make cheddar. <laughs> Uh, is, is, does that? I think that's accurate. That, I mean, I, yeah, yes. absolutely. I think again, we would like to make sure that, as a board, what we have talked about is making sure that again the business districts have an opportunity to continue to grow, yeah. and that um, this does not fill in the gaps that we have prioritized for future commercial fills. Mm -hmm. One other question I would ask is to back to what sort of what Jean and Queen were talking about is, does um, a zone that, uh, you know, obviously allows, say, 
something along the lines of what Lexington did of three stories of residential by right and five stories, you know, if you do commercial on the ground floor. Does that feel to you like the commercial district's growth? I'll ask my other colleagues. The reverse. No, no, doing that in, in the currently residential parcels. No, but, right. In the Did I say it the wrong within, way? But not within what we've identified I, as I misunderstood. Yeah. Yes, in, the, within, in between spaces. Within the, in, in the places that are today colored. Yes, with, within the currently residential yeah. parcels. I like, I said I like that. Yeah, yeah. I do I, like I'm it. I think it helps me what Kim and Rachel were talking about because then people have the decision to make. Do I want to do residential or, hey, all of a sudden I can do mixed use in these parcels. But I want to make sure, Gene, that we're in alignment. That's in the spaces outside of the business districts, correct? Correct, correct. Mm -hmm. okay. yes, yes, that's what I'm Great. saying. Yes. Okay. I'll actually um, maybe uh, get Rebecca to then come to me. Yes. So this is just a point of clarification for me, being the novice amongst all of you. <laughs> You all keep using the term business district. Now, I've lived in Arlington for 30 years, and while I understand that some people might consider Mass Ave from Cambridge to Lexington to be a business district, that is not how I've ever perceived it as a resident. There is areas that are very business, and I can, you know, stop at several shops when I park, and so that would like be the Heights, and it would sort of be the center, and Capital it would Square. be Capitol Square. But then, like if I need to stop at my dry cleaner that happens to be, um, you know, out of, out of the center on the way to Capitol Square, that to me is not a business district. I have to drive there, I just get out of my car, run in and drop off. If I'm lucky, the post office would be open and I could do something there too. But what do you view the business districts to be? Because if, we are allowed uh, to then consider anything in between business districts to be opportunities for multifamily housing. I think that picture on the map would be nice. So there are, currently the business districts are challenged, right? We'll use the Heights as an example. So the Heights, there is, there are three clusters of, of, of business areas when those holes are filled in, that becomes a nicely sized, walkable business district without feeling like there are pieces that are disconnected from the whole. That, that I'm understanding. I got that. That seems right. logical to me. Right. But and in where Capital does it Square, end? So that's, again, where there is opportunity for it to continue to grow and where we're saying we want to make sure that there is opportunity in that space so for example the potential future hotel <laughs> right right there yes um that is that would not be the end of the arlington heights business district potentially when when you create larger parcels there is an opportunity for the, um, the parcels adjacent to then realize their potential. And so what we're looking for is to create that buffer so that we uh, incentivize, to, to Kin's point, the combination of parcels in the future for some of these larger developments. Okay, so where Claire just pointed, we're now almost at the purple, which is what's being called the Arlington Center subdistrict. So you are talking about connecting all the districts Arlington. potentially along Mass Ave. So that they're, I mean, by their character and personality, maybe they are three different business districts, but the business districts in your view are best allowed to expand so that they connect to one another all the way from one end of Mass Ave in Lexington to the other end in Cambridge. I, again, I think we could look at whether or not there is some discontinuity between the, um, actually that's not entirely true. So the purple along here, there is some discontinuity between Arlington Heights and Arlington Center and between Arlington Center and East Arlington. 
But in East Arlington, for example, at the edges of Capitol Square, there is, again, there are those pockets which, which could be, allow you to fill in some of those spaces to uh, pull in more of those businesses as a, an, a recognized business district within East Arlington. I think what you're asking is very hard for us to give you a different the fine answer right here because you're putting us on the spot. Right? Sorry. No, I'm not, no, I'm not saying in a mean way or anything else. I'm just saying, you know, we, we got to look at it as the, uh, as the as a group there, where these spots are. I mean, I, I think asking Rachel where it starts and stops is not fair to her and fair to us. Okay? But just knowing the fact that we want uh, these to be next to each other, so they so it, it has a synergy to it. We also want it next to each other, so if someone wanted to combine spaces, I'll give you the hotel for example. It was it's a combination of two spaces. One space was not enough yeah. to put a hotel together. Okay, so so if we give them opportunity to combine spaces, so we can actually have commercial space, because otherwise you 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 doesn't pencil. Yeah, you know, you're locked in these five thousand. 6,000 square foot little dots all over the place, and we're back to Swiss cheese again, even though it's all one line of, uh, of uh, business district. So is it your thought that we need to do something along the lines of as being described, which is sort of a walking tour of Mass Ave, so that, because for us to propose something that is um, amenable to the visions you all have for the commercial districts, don't we kind of have to at some point know where these lines are gonna be? Again, unless we deprioritize Mass Ave and try and ensure that we meet the capacity through these adjacent parcels, which is what I know we had originally talked about. Steve? So yeah, I, I think, you know, what we've, the tricky part about this is we've kind of got three balls up in the air at once, and it's really a question of how to get them to stitch together. And what I'm kind of getting the sense of is that yeah, Mass Ave, there's a lot of lonely little business districts. We need to give them room to, to acquire friends. Um, you know, there are a lot of narrow parcels um, we need that are really not developable under today's zoning. And we need to give them room, some room to grow backwards. Um, the little broken up districts, you know, we need to leave, you know, make some accommodation so they can be glued back together. But maybe if there are sections that are you know, if, if a decent sized residential section, then maybe that could be okay for MBTA communities okay. with, with a with a mixed use allowance. Yeah. Yes. Is that? Yeah. yeah. Okay. I think I wanted to bring up a couple of other things, just sure. keeping an eye on the time. Yeah, I think and we've got about 10 more minutes. Probably. Yeah. So um, one other thing that I would love to sort of talk a little bit about is, is the idea of site plan review because that is an option that's available to us. And I think it would be um, really good to hear, for the working group to sort of hear your thoughts on, you know, um, what you would or wouldn't like to see in terms of site plan review. Also, you know, if there's anything that we should be either considering or pushing for in terms of design guidelines. Uh, I, don't, I don't know that that's something that we can like do, as, certainly on this timeline, um, but you know, if we should be opening that conversation. Um, and then, I don't know that we need to necessarily talk about it, but I think sort of confirming for folks that like, uh, I think we expect to keep our same um, inclusionary zoning um, of 15% of um, at 60% at AMI, and that we, can, we should be able to have UTL and, or whoever our consultant is confirm for us that that's economically viable. So those are sort of three things that I know we've only got 10 more minutes, but. Um. So one of the things that I think would be great, Claire, is if we, um, one of the things we're going to need to do is probably update the residential design guidelines. Correct. Um, because we, they are really focused on one and two family and some three family. So if we are looking at four plus and by, at, as of right, we're going to need to put, probably need to ask town meeting for an appropriation for, um, an update to the residential design guidelines as part of this work. Would you all say that that is something that would be helpful, especially again if this goes to an as of right? 
I think so. Proposal. Um, and I, I, we, I'd like to get back to site plan review because I know, Claire, you had some Yeah, I, I, I want to say something about that. Everybody's been saying Lexington passed the SMBT communities. But right now they're working on the requirements for a site plan review. I met with a few of them over the weekend. I have a list that I was going to bring to the meeting tomorrow to show you guys what they're thinking about on the site plan reviews. And I believe they're way off. Okay. Who's the they? Lexington. Lexington. Oh, Lexington. Okay. You know, I mean, we don't even have that in our reviews. They're looking at balloon studies. Where really? You, what? Really? Yeah. Oh, I'll show you. You had a great list, Claire, that we you shared with us. I, yes, I did. But, you know, but these, all these, all the things that you're <laughs> stacking on there. Okay, so lesson that they're just clearly passing. They, they have all the regulations that they try and look at, okay? And I'm saying, well, this is unenforceable, but they have this thing there, you know? Well, I mean... Lex I Lexington's to emulate because they passed MBTA yes. communities. But what they passed and what they're proposing to do is not where we want to go necessarily. Yes, but we will t we will talk about that tomorrow, hopefully. I, can can I please? We we had discussed this at our last meeting. Yes, site plan review. We were thinking that maybe for three families, it would be an administrative review by the staff. And for more than three families, it would be administrative review from the board. And the reason for that is, if you say, oh, three family, no site plan review, they're saying, oh, I'll build three families. I don't have any site plan review. So there needs to be, we something. think, something at each level so that there's some way to go about doing this. We may need design guidelines for larger buildings eventually, but I think we can write enough guidelines into MBTA communities to get us through site plan review. I don't think we need a 20 page booklet. In terms of the design? In terms of doing site plan review. What, what guidelines do you need? I, I haven't thought through what they are, but I don't think we need a 20 page booklet to do some site plan review. Are you sorry, Jean? Just so that I'm clear, are you saying we don't need a 20-page booklet on what is reviewed through site plan review, or for the residential design guidelines? Residential, residential design guidelines. We have a so version of that right now, don't we? But they're for one and two. We yes. could apply those principles to the larger buildings until until we get some. So I don't want us not to. Because they're going to give us something, we're going to hopefully get something for town meeting, and it's going to be at least a year before we get residential guidelines for larger buildings. I understand so that. Honestly, I don't. In the I I would just like to say that I think architecturally, the um, guidelines for a one and two family are going to be very different. Yes, than, I, I agree. So I, I we. I think we should ask for the yeah. appropriation. Right. right. Okay. Right. Yeah, I'm saying in the interim. There are things in the interim, I understand. Yeah. Steve, did you want uh, to weigh in on those three questions that Sanjay just posed? Yeah, um, I, I think, yeah, we had talked about uh, site plan review um, for design guidelines. We also have, in addition to residential design guidelines, we also have commercial, another set of we have an appropriation an for appropriation. them. Well, we have an old we have an old version from 2015. Right. Um, and an it's appropriation to them. Yes. Um, yeah, and I think we are expecting the same IZ, assuming we can assuming we can justify it at the scale that we're considering allowing. Great. Anything else from the working group that would be helpful? Those are the board? the main top. I think we've covered a lot of ground here. It's been really. Very good. You know, it's wonderful to have Steve and, and Kim there, right? They, they give us lots of perspective, but it's also good to have this sort of larger conversation, right, where all of you get to talk to each other and all of you get to listen and ask some more detailed questions. This has been, I think, 
really good for us. I don't know if other people have. Thank you very much. Thank you, thank you. And then we will just let everyone know we will open this up very shortly to public comment so that the working group and we can all hear all your feedback as well too. Very interested in, in that as well. Richard, can I bring up one more thing? Please, go ahead, Ken. Uh, we had talked about the group, the uh, MIT communities have been having these outreach and, and community outreach. I thought we were, as the ARB was, also going to have our own outreach. Uh, we're not planning on that. You don't think it's necessarily required. I want to talk no. about it amongst ourselves. No, we, uh, we, had, we had talked about um, how once, once the, uh, the recommendations are made to the redevelopment board, and we review and um, vote to um, to uh, recommend action or 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 not, and you know work through those items for um, town meeting. That we absolutely will need to create public engagement pieces and whether or um, opportunities, and whether that occurs through precinct meetings or through some other space, we we haven't. But we will hold identify that. We will, we will hold our own either our own or again, like I said, I, I really believe this is a we. Okay. <laughs> so um, whether or not, um, you know, the redevelopment board can certainly lead those, but I would certainly, you know, welcome and um, love to have some of the members of the working group as, as part of that as much as you would, would like to as we bring this this forward in its final, um, in its final. Okay. And also, the last draft. thing I want to say is being on this in the working group committee, Everybody that's been working on that's doing a lot of work and, and, and spending a lot of time. I'd like to congratulate and thank you guys for doing that. It, it, it has been uh, uh, great seeing you guys do all that work, and, and I don't want to say it's not underappreciated. Okay. And I will add to that a, a very big thank you to Claire and her staff because yes. they also make right, those sorts of things possible, and like things like June 8th, right, all the kinds mm -hmm. of um, support we're getting from the DEI division, right, to be able to do the kind of community outreach that we've done and are going to continue to do over the summer. Um, that, thank you, Claire, and the rest of the staff. So. I would just say Please. one final thing. I mean, you're taking a lot of information back, obviously, yep. and I think if the next version doesn't get you to enough units, you need to think about pulling back off Mass Ave and Broadway more. Because a lot of those streets already have a lot of threes and fours on them. And there are some streets not in this zone that have four, fives, and sixes on them. So I think there's probably a way to do that a little bit too. Okay. Great. Thank you very much. Uh, so with that, we will close uh, the work session, agenda item number five. And I will um, move to opening up open forum. Uh, so at this time, we'll invite any members of the public uh, joining us this evening to please raise your hand. Um, I will recognize you with an opportunity to speak. Thank you so much. We'll move the microphone over there. I'll ask you to please come to the, to the microphone, introduce yourself by your first, last name and address. And um, uh, you will have up to three minutes to uh, address the board. So, uh, please. And again, it's not going to project. It's just to pick up Tracy and Mike. Thank you. All right. Oh, Thank you. Oh, Thank you. Oh, I'm sorry? Uh, I was just going to say, we want to adjust uh, on the bank. You can adjust the right. the knob on the bank. Thank you so much. Um, we know that it's working in place. Thank you all very much for all your work. I like that I've said in our meetings to see what's going on here. Um, some comments and one question. I want to echo what Jean said about not completely uh, killing the idea of three families. I read a really interesting post from the Harvard Center on Joint Housing Studies today talking about how even in high priced, desirable urban areas, three families are a vehicle to home ownership, particularly for immigrants who frequently pool various family members, buy a three family, live in one unit and rent the other two. And they talked about how important it is to preserve and renovate these older three families and that construction of them should also perhaps be encouraged. Um, I think the other thing that three families do is um, adhere to one of the recommendations of the, the MBTA guidelines, 
which is to build in accordance with the aesthetics and the scale and the style of the community. So I think they have a, a role to serve in certain areas as this, as this goes forward. Um, I also want to say, I hope we don't go too far down the road of holding up Lexington as a guide. Lexington has three times our land area, um, two-thirds our population, and half our housing units. So it's a very, very different community than Arlington is. Um, so so it's, a, it's something to look at. You know, they've, they've obviously gone above and beyond. But I, I'm not sure that, that we should model too much of what we do on them. Um, I also want to bring up the fact that several residents have put a lot of work into creating alternate maps, and they seem not to have really been considered. I know that you guys are on a track, and to you know start bringing in something that's completely different really will be in a different direction. But some of the maps that I've seen are very, very interesting. I'm thinking of the, the ones that Ted Fields has, has worked on. Uh, and they do a little bit about what you talk about, about putting some of this back, spreading it out into other neighborhoods, uh, kind of sharing the pain, if you will, getting this into various parts of town. And I think it would really be worthwhile to take a look at these uh, and consider them. You know, maybe as a whole, they're not great, but maybe there are bits and pieces of them that could augment what your people is doing with their map. Uh, and these are, these are not maps that have been tossed off. There's a, there's a good bit of work that's, that's gone into them. And my final thing is a question. We have residential design guidelines, which are voluntary, but we also have design standards, which are not voluntary. They are, to my understanding, requirements. And since all of this would be by right, with those design standards, this would be 2015, would they still even apply. Design standards that we've been using. What's an example of a design standard? They were design standards for commercial areas. Right. Um, they're, they're, old, they're old, and I don't think they're referred to very often. I don't know. Right. Uh, those, are, I believe, were guidelines as well. You know, they may, be, they may use the word standards, but they are not part of our zoning code, and they are okay. not part of any regulatory requirement. So um, yes, they are they may be named something differently, but they are currently not part of the um, environmental design review criteria or um, the special permit conditions. Gotcha. Yes. So there's not really a lot that you know, this is my final comment. There's not really a lot that we can do in the way of guidelines that would be required. We would strongly recommend them. Um, but I Please. One little addendum to that. We do now have in the zoning bylaw rules on transparency and other things for first floor. Those should remain in effect even if there's an overlay district. But in terms of form um, related to architectural style, et cetera, those style is not currently. Right. And if I may, Mr. Fields, maps are attached to the working group agenda for tomorrow night. If anyone would like to take a look at them. No, we haven't seen them. Thank you. They're attached to Next. the They suggested best practices, and they 
Thanks, Eva. So I'm mentioning this because we're talking about site plan review, and I'm wondering if this can be an opportunity to work in the concepts of the ecological framework that um, your environmental planner was talking about and was, again, I was very interested in, and working in um, where would trees go, where would open space go, where are the cities or 15-minute neighborhoods, and um, I am enthralled by that idea. Um, and the idea that everything that you need could be within a 15-minute um, or a half-mile walk of your home is, um, I think, really desirable for these new neighborhoods that we're going to be um, building upon. Um, and so within um, these neighborhoods that um, the good folks um, on the uh, MBTA Communities Working Group um, are imagining, we could have um, walkable access to jobs, um, parks, schools, banks, medical facilities, libraries, um, art studios, theaters, cafes, um, art galleries, restaurants, a farmer's market, bakeries, um, and florists, gyms, offices, and a wide variety um, of diverse businesses, including um, legal, architectural, uh, consulting, landscaping, auto repair, warehousing, construction, investment, personal care, animal daycare, um, etc. And this is a sustainable vision, one that would reduce reliance on um, single occupancy vehicles, um, and is in keeping with the basic tenets of the MBTA Communities Housing Act. Um, and I think that when um, uh, the chair of the ARB used the word vibrant, um, I, that's what I imagine um, is, is being uh, floated. And I also hope um, that uh, some of this um, needed new housing that's going to be developed as a result of um, the work of the MBTA Communities Working is um, permanently affordable. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Anyone else? Wish to speak this evening? Okay. I just wanted to say one thing. Sure. Just, I mean, I think an important point to make, and Susan, you just, you could raise important your point to make, Thank and you. Susan, you reminded me of it, is there are a lot of sections of the zoning bylaw that get activated when there's environmental design review, special permits. Well, since we're gonna get rid of those in the MBTA overlay district, at some point before we go to town meeting, we're gonna to have to go through the zoning bylaw and see what we're gonna to have to amend so that those things will also be applicable when it's not through environmental design review. It may be like public shade trees for tall residential buildings and, you know, um, 
inclusionary zoning. So we will have to go through and see what is tied to special permits and environmental design review that we'll need to modify in the zoning bylaw. Thank you, Gene. Did I see one more person? Please. Hi, I'm Brian McBride. Uh, I'm a member of the Open Space Committee and recently a member of the Conservation Commission. And uh, the Open Space Committee recently sent a letter to you all. I don't know if you had a chance to look at it, but I think the, um, the main thrust of that letter is that um, the same kind of consideration that we're giving to commercial um, aspects of this development ought to be given to open space in the districts that we're talking about. This is a critical part of a livable environment, and it's one of the reasons we have successful districts like the center today, right? You can, you can go to Kickstand Cafe and sit outdoors, right? You can walk over and have a coffee from Butternut at the uh, Jason Russell House, right? This is how people mix together. This is why people move to Arlington, right? It's green, it's leafy, it has open spaces. There's no reason you can't have a large building next to that open space, right? But if we have a wall of commercial and retail and residential buildings down Mass Ave. And we've seen some of these buildings. I'm, I'm concerned about them, right? They come right up to the street. I'm concerned about the zero setback that I saw in one of the um, graphs. I'm not an architect or a designer, so I'm not sure even what it means. But the concern is you don't, if you don't have a livable environment, and that means a district interspersed with small parks, with places you can sit and enjoy the trees and the sunshine, where you can meet neighbors, this 15 minute, um, uh, district that you were talking about, Kristen, I think this is an important part and I'm not hearing it yet in the discussion today. So I really ask that we consider open space, community connections, uh, a, you know, a su support of habitat and nature, some, some of the creatures moving back and forth from parcel to parcel. We have a great opportunity to make Arlington a wonderful place with additional density but also um, green and open spaces built into that plan. And I really think that we should build this in now. It's gonna to be too late, right? If we make large buildings and five-story uh, five uh, apartment buildings and then later on say, gosh, where's the open space, right? It's gonna to be too late to turn back. So I wish we would add that to our planning right now and I hope you can consider that. Thank you. Great, thank you so much. Uh, would anyone else like to speak? Please. Aaron Holman, 12 Whittemore Street, also town meeting member of Precinct 6. Um, one or two questions and comments. Uh, has anybody on this board uh, asked or tried to answer the question, given a plot of land or given some uh, constraints, what is the cheapest that you could construct units of housing? Uh, we, we don't typically answer questions. We'll, we'll take any comments you have, and then you know we'll be able to um, address those later. Oh, okay. Um, I guess what I see, and I also read it in the 3A guidelines, there's no consideration of affordability, or shall I say token consideration only. And I guess what I see happening is Arlington turning into a golden gated ghetto where you will build lots of housing, it will be very expensive, and only those who can afford those very expensive prices will be able to live here. And I don't think that's the community we should be trying to build. Thank you. Thank you. Would anyone else like to make any comments? All right. So, um, uh, at this time, I'll close open forum, um, and we will move to agenda item number seven, which is new business. Claire, did you have any new business to share with us? No, I have no b new business to share. I was just trying to think <laughs> of some. I, I have not, uh, the MBTA working groups uh, meeting uh, is tomorrow evening, and I believe we've moved the location. It will be held at the Arlington Police Department in their community room. Um, as we move forward in the summer and you know different vacations and things, we still have a lot of work to do. So we decided to move to a location where we could have a hybrid meeting. Um, or allow for people to participate remotely. Great, thank you very much. And I'll uh, open it up to the board. Uh, Steve, anything under new business? Um, had some really interesting conversations with people about uh, 
the evolution of Cambridge's affordable housing overlay, but I'll leave it at that. <laughs> okay, great. Thank you. Gene? No, no, no. Ken? Um, a while back, I did ask about uh, the status of our reviewed projects. Yes. I know you're busy. I don't want to add all the more. Claire and I just talked about that before the meeting started. Okay. So that is. If you, when you have a chance, okay, I'm not saying I need the next week or whatever. I, I just want to know where the status is of some of the stuff. Understood. And that's all. all right. um, no, I mean, if you have pressing it, other things, do that first. Don't, don't you know, I'll put that at the bottom of your list. I won't sleep. Okay. Yeah. How about that? <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Um, I did want to just uh, talk about next steps. So um, in terms of timing, we have two more meetings before um, the August 28th meeting yep. where we will most likely start our Warren article. Um, well, we'll have to do Warren article review that night yep. and identify the final wording for the warrant and yes. then move into the hearings. So is there... Sanjay, I don't know if there is a sense of when the working group, if you, um, you know, would, would like to come back and, and chat at one of our two July meetings, whether July 10th or I think the other one is the 24th. Let me just pull that up so I can. I think, honestly, like, next week is 4th of July. I think it's going to be hard for us to come back and have anything. I mean, if we want to continue the discussion we had tonight, we could do that on July 10th. I don't think we're going to have much more meaningful to look for you to, um, you know, iterate between now and then. I think it makes probably more sense for us to come back on the 24th. Well, let's plan on that. Yeah. yeah. Perfect. All right. Great. Um, and with that, I will see if there's a motion to adjourn. Motion to adjourn. <laughs> we'll take a vote starting with Steve. Yes. Gene? Yes. Kim? Yes. And I'm a yes as well. Thank you Thanks. all for joining us this Thank evening. You.